Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Eddie, as known as Mota Skin, where we cover skincare, mental health, and just a little bit of me. So welcome back to another episode of Sunscreen Month, Week, whatever have you. We are doing sunscreens and this video we are doing the Elta MD UV Glow SPF 36. This is a sunscreen that just recently came out, just like most of the sunscreens I'm covering right now. And this one is very similar to the very famous clear sunscreen, except this one is supposed to make you glow and some additional antioxidants. And it comes in a tinted and non-tinted version, but in this video we're covering the tinted version. And I also have the non-tinted version, but I'm gonna go into explanation why this video is focusing on the tinted one. So, let's get into it. But first things first, I'm gonna ask you to please hit the subscribe button and please like this video. Liking and subscribing helps my channel out immensely and I would really appreciate it. And please leave a comment with whatever is going through your brain because I would love to get to know everyone in this community. So as always, I'm gonna remind you, I'm gonna do one application, then reapplication on top of itself, and how it works with makeup. Usually it is how it works under it as like a primer slash base, but depending on the formula, I will also show you if it works well being applied on top of the makeup itself. Uh, full disclosure for this video, this sunscreen is not one I'm gonna be doing on top of makeup, but I am discussing how it works under makeup. Okay, so let's get into the formula and the ingredients. So first of all, this is a 100% mineral sunscreen. It is completely zinc oxide, not even titanium dioxide. It is 20.2% zinc. And like the other famous sunscreen, Clear, it is a combination sunscreen of zinc and octinoxate. So that's what really drew me to this on all physical sunscreen. And so it also is SPF 36, so it is, uh, you know, like 10 SPF lower than their famous one, that's SPF 46, I believe. This is 36. Now, 30, 35, 40, 50, which one's better? Remember, it's not really about the number. I mean, first of all, try to aim between 30 and 50, but what really matters is if you reapply sunscreen and how much time you're spending out in direct sunlight opposed to indoors. If you're indoors, one application is usually fine for the day, but if you're outside and you've had direct sun exposure for two hours, two to three sometimes, then you gotta reapply. Otherwise, after two, three hours, it's not doing anything else for you. This one, it's mineral, so the mineral zinc oxide is gonna be really soothing for the skin and really good for acne prone individuals. And just like they clear, this also has niacinamide in it. They don't disclose the percentage, but I'm highly certain it's also 5% niacinamide, just like their clear version. So it's also gonna help with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and just blemishes, and just your skin cell turnover in general. This also comes with vitamin E in here and also a new ingredient that is not in the other sunscreens. It is ergothionine. Now that is something I've seen here and there, but I never really delved into it. But after doing some light research, I found out that ergothionine is a very potent antioxidant that protects you from the environment, as well as giving dull, tired skin a little bit more of luminosity, and apparently it boosts sunscreen protection. So that's why they added it into this formula. It also has aloe leaf extract and coconut fruit extract to provide that soothing benefits and that hydration in here. It also has a bisambolo to kind of soothe the skin. It also has sodium hyaluronate. And additionally, it actually has ginger root extract, which I really, really love in sunscreen. It's just that added like benefit. I love ginger for kind of evening out skin tone. And sometimes it just really gives you a nice healthy glow. But that's the ingredient list for this guy. It is a really, really nice ingredient list. Um, I think I like it a lot more on paper than their very famous clear bestseller. And now, before we get into applications and everything, I am gonna say the reason I'm doing the tinted opposed to the non-tinted is that, remember, this is an all physical formula, meaning the white cast is more likely to be apparent opposed to their famous combinations on the screen, where their chemical UV filter will kind of help the white cast kind of mitigate it. And in this one, because it's all mineral, adding a tinted version is usually the way to go, just so it fits more of a wider audience. 
So I got to test both, right? And I wanted to see if they're all mineral, non-tinted worked. And two things. First of all, it did leave a white cast. And it wasn't horrible, but it was apparent. And then I had my mother try it, actually, because she is a little bit darker than I. And she just did one pump because she doesn't go ham like I do. And even then, I was observing her. And even she told me, and I could tell that it had a white cast on her. So she wasn't wowed by it, nor was she wowed by the glow in it. So I thought, oh, okay, well, let's move on. Let's try the tinted version. And on top of that, on top of the white cast, it actually had a little bit of a pilling effect, which is something a lot of people struggle with LTMD. And I found that the correlation is if you use too much skincare and then you apply the LTMD sunscreens, usually they pill, especially the best seller combination sunscreen. Um, but with that one, I was going, oh, not really a big fan. So I tried the tinted version and both things are gone. First of all, no white cast. And second of all, it did not pill, didn't get patchy, any of that. But with that being said, that's why we're doing the tinted one and let's get into it. So first application. So when I applied it, it actually was like kind of almost a little streaky. So I thought, all right, let's see how this is going to go. Is it going to pill? Is it not? And when I applied it, you know, I had to work it in, as you'll see, and I had a pimple patch on, so I kind of had to avoid that. But once I kind of blended it in, tapped it in, it was really nice. Like, this is a really nice sunscreen. Like, the glow comes through the mica in here, and the glow was very apparent. Like, it's it wasn't like a um, shiny glow. It wasn't like a fake glittery glow it was just a healthy glow and just a, a notch above their best seller i would say it's right between like a nice hydrating dewy formula and something like the um the one by color science that is a kind of like a highlighter or the suit or the what's it called the glow screen by super goop i think this fits right between those two not too shiny glittery dewy but also not just dewy it's like right in the middle it's a really nice happy medium i blended it in i loved it really nice and throughout the day i noticed that my skin wasn't feeling the most moisturized so i will say you do need a moisturizer under it under this this did not dry me out but i'm just saying don't use this as your sole base moisturizer. Some people might get away with it, like maybe oily people, but in general, generally speaking, I don't think most people could get away with it. So definitely use this on top of a moisturizer. But first day was a pass. It worked out nicely. Loved it. Day two. Okay, so day two. I applied this on top of itself. You know, reapplied it around, you know, the 1, 2 p.m. mark, and I applied it at like 10 in the morning. And so I applied it and I thought, okay, please don't add an extra white cast. Please don't pill. And it didn't pill, which was like surprising. That was really, really nice. And now it did feel a little bit heavier because like I said, this is an all physical sunscreen. So physical sunscreens usually tend to be a little bit heavier than most. But when it's well for formulated, it doesn't become an issue, nor do you feel like it's going to clog your pores. This did not feel like it was going to clog my pores. And actually, I thought, wow, I really like this. I could just take this with me, reapply, blend it in, and it's perfect. I, it evens out skin tone nicely, hides redness nicely, gives you a dewy glow. I loved it. It was really, really nice. So second application had no pilling issues. And if you can tell from the footage, I don't believe it had any white cast. Um, not enough, at least, for me to not use it again. But the white cast was either very little or like none at all, especially after five minutes and tapping it in. Beautiful. Day two, I think, was a pass. And obviously, you guys can make your decision based off looking at the footage. But all in all, I think this is really good for application and reapplication. But that is for the tinted version. I believe the tint in here would fit um, a good amount of people, but I don't think it would fit much darker skin tones. Like, if you're a little bit darker than I, it might fit you, but if you're of a deep skin tone, probably not. I don't think this would work. This might work as a primer 
for your makeup so you can mitigate any white cast or any weirdness going on. But that's a perfect set way to go into the makeup application. So I applied this and then I applied my makeup. So I applied uh, my favorite powder foundation, the one um, by One Size, Patrick Star. I love that one. It looks like skin. It feels like butter on your skin. Doesn't even feel or look like powder. And then when you put a setting mist, beautiful, sinks in. It is butter. Love it. So as you can see from the application, I put it on top of this. So obviously this is gonna boost up the glow when it comes to that finish, right? And I put it on and you can see from the close-up shots, it actually looked even more like skin because it gave me that extra glow to my skin on, under the powder. And I just, it was lovely. Like I love that glow coming through. So yeah, like and it applied beautifully. It didn't get patchy didn't get weird. I didn't get extra dry around the nose. I always make sure nothing's going on around my mouth or the nose area because I like anything that I wear that's makeup wise to basically like leave no trace. I want it to be invisible. I want no one to know I'm wearing it. I want people to think this is my skin. And so usually that is a giveaway that you have something on your skin. And that did not happen, especially this being a mineral sunscreen. Like a mineral sunscreen usually, you know, sits on top of the skin. It can dry out your skin and it can clump up. So with that being said, this did not do that. So that combination was beautiful. And you can tell from the footage. Did it sink in? Does it look nice? What do you guys think? Did not get patchy? None of that. So I would really say this sunscreen works by itself. Reapplied and under makeup. So this is a really glow getter sunscreen. I think it's a really good release by LTMD and I believe they've been listening to people where they've been saying they wanted an all mineral sunscreen. They wanted something glowy and dewy and I'm so glad they always come out with a tinted and non-tinted version because they know a lot of people's skin tone is not gonna fit their non-tinted version. Um, I do wish most companies would come out with two tints like a tint for someone like me, and then a tint for deep complexions. And then you can, you know, maybe buy both and mix if you're in between that, but at least that you cover someone who's much deeper. Um, or if you tan, you can buy the next tint. Just, I wish more tints came out, you know, just opposed to a universal tint, you know. Um, but all in all, I really like the sunscreen. I would recommend you actually purchase this because it's a really nice one. I just, I love it. Like, look at that instant, you'll see right now, that instant glow it gives. Look at that right there. Beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. But yeah, very good for acne prone individuals. I would recommend it for combination. Honestly, all skin types. Um, when it comes to dry skin types, maybe not. Uh, but it does have hyaluronic acid, it does have those fruit extracts, aloe, vitamin E, and you can layer this on top of a moisturizer and it'll work like miraculously. So yeah, this is a 10 out of 10 for me, maybe nine out of 10 based off the non-tinted version, but being tinted, I really like this. I just wish it f would maybe fit more skin tones, but nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, it's almost perfect, honestly. And there is your review. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for joining me for another sunscreen video. I hope with all these videos, you guys find the sunscreen you've been looking for. Because once you find that sunscreen and you know what works for you, like the world of sunscreen opens up, you know? And then you see a new release and you go, that's gonna work for me. Or you go, huh, that's definitely not gonna work for me. Even by just looking at it. So um, I hope I'm giving you guys a nice array of stuff. You know, but yeah. So thank you for joining me. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, and leave a comment below. What did you think of the sunscreen? Is there an alternative? What do you wish they did with this sunscreen? Alright guys, thank you for joining me.